We are also joined by Teofil Mutesa, who is the CEO, founder, and personal trainer of CEO of Kigali Fit. Teofil, great to have you on the square. Thank you for having me, Diane. Great. So I recently got invited to appear on Rwandan television on a talk show called The Square. It is a weekly talk show presented by these lovely handsome people uh, on a variety of topics regarding things that happen in and around Rwanda. I have been quite a fan of this talk show as it was one of the few news outlets I could still follow when I used to live abroad. As I was sharing this news on my Instagram and WhatsApp stories, I got many congratulations from friends and family. Apparently being invited to appear on TV is some kind of a success in life? <laughs> I don't know. Tonight's topic was about Rwandan diaspora returning home, starting businesses and challenges that they encounter along the way. So Phil, if we can move to you, what inspired you to move back as well as uh, what are some of the challenges you've probably experienced? Uh, thank you, Diana. So the first time I came back to Rwanda um, was on a vacation in 2009. It was just awesome to see so many black people, especially Rwandese people actually around me, because I never had that um, where I was uh, growing up. And there was just a sense of feeling home, a sense of feeling uh, just like a regular person. I could like sit on the bus and not get like stared on the whole time when anyone would like step into the bus uh, this trend of Africans or other black people who are returning to the motherland, aka Africa, is steadily growing and becoming very, very popular. I am clearly one of those people who has followed this trend to the letter. I moved from the Netherlands, Europe, to Rwanda, Africa last year after living in the diaspora for 20 years. I already made a more in-depth video about my top 8 reasons why I moved here that you can watch at the end of this video. And I started a business, a gym, which just turned 1 years old right around when COVID hit. But is this returning of black people and diasporans a good thing for the continent or Rwanda specifically? You see, people from the diaspora come with certain characteristics that they themselves are sometimes not even aware of. They usually have high expectations. The expectations before you come to Rwanda can be this <laughs> high. <laughs> they have little to no patience compared to the local people. When you're coming to Rwanda, they should tell the Rwandan diaspora you need to pop a chill pill. <laughs> because... Relax. And, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they come with a certain competitive spirit in everything that they do that is really unmatched and unknown here in Africa. But there are also some pros. These diasporans usually come with money, and even more important, access to more and cheaper money. They also come with something that I call a non-poverty mindset. If we take a look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, their physiological needs are totally met, whereas many people in Africa and in Rwanda specific still struggle with this on a daily basis. They come with a very unique mindset and set of skill because of exposure to different cultures, higher education, and of course, competitive markets. Lastly, and this is what I call the cream on the crop, they come with a certain romantic view of Rwanda or Africa in general. <laughs> you cannot know how tough or hard life is here until you come and see or experience it for yourself. And I'm sure if you knew exactly in advance, many of you will probably not come. <laughs> but just like when you enter a relationship, you do not think about a breakup. And if you knew how hard and painful a breakup is before you entered any relationship, I'm sure many of you would stay single for the rest of your lives. I fell for this myself. I thought I'll come here and start a very unique business. And by this time of the year, I should have been like successful, having uh, employed my entire family and even more people. Unfortunately, COVID-19 and the government had other plans. And you ask whether it was affected. Yes, it was uh, actually severely affected. Um, as of today, the gyms are still officially closed by, uh, by the government and there's really nothing that we can do about it. There's no kind of like help or um, to get around it. It's, it's hard to, to get uh, a good sense of what's like the reasoning behind this. We understand that the gyms are closed, but why are they like still closed, for example? Is there a certain risk that maybe we are not known to that... 
they judge that maybe going to an in an airport in an airplane that's okay but going to a gym that's really dangerous we kind of miss that kind of communication Rwanda has decided to invest into the return of the diasporans through programs as Agachiro Fund, Rwanda Day and TV topics such as these and you know in a way it's working in 2015, I went to my first Rwanda Day event in Amsterdam. If you don't know what Rwanda Day is, it's basically a yearly uh, conference that happens where the Rwanda comes to your country. So people who are living in the diaspora get to experience Rwanda in their own home court. During this Rwanda Day, I got so excited about a potential life in Rwanda, I started researching and did my internship right that same year. Five years later, I have moved and now I live in Rwanda. Though the political will is there, the path for diasporans or other people who want to immigrate to Rwanda is still not very clear. Like I said in this talk show, mostly the lack of factual and up-to-date information was my biggest hurdle when I wanted to move to Rwanda. Most of the people I speak to also like me who want to come back here, they're, they're always asking me information like, Theo, I... Can I come? Do I, do I also need to get a passport? I mean, a, a visa to enter the country? Uh, like, what does it cost? So, all the information is, is out there, of course, but it's somehow it's not easy to, uh, to find. Rwanda has made great strides over the year, but there's still much more to be done. This is why I'm still on YouTube and providing you guys with the best information about Rwanda out there. On that note, guys, if you like what I do here on YouTube, please consider supporting me on Patreon, for the price of a cappuccino, you can help me maintain this YouTube channel to keep producing high quality content. And I'm also starting to do some consultancy, more information also on my Patreon page, linked below. Thank you guys for watching, you can watch the full talk show video linked below. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video, it is totally free. And I would like to see you all in the next video.